Hi, I'm Daniel Andrews, owner and creator of the DAN Show, and welcome to my latest 2021 NFL Mock Draft video. Today, I'm going to break down the Arizona Cardinals and what I think they will do with the 16th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. If you're new here and you like football, welcome home because I post new draft videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but hit the bell and get notified every time I come out with a new video because just like yesterday, I came out with my second retraction video. Now, every Friday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I go live on YouTube on the live stream Anything goes. Every single question that you have, I will answer live here on YouTube. So look, if you like this video and some of my other content and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, what are you on crack? Hit that subscribe button and hey, let's break down the Cardinals. Cardinals over the last couple of days have had events happen that could very easily affect uh, their draft strategy going into 2021 draft. First off, the Caleb Far Farley surgery. Now, there's a lot of mock drafts that have Caleb Farley going to Arizona here at 16. If you believe that, and you also believe Drew Rosenhaus, who's um, Caleb Farley's agent, that he says he's going to be 100% ready to go when training camp starts. If you believe that, you believe that the back surgery is a, is a minor enough issue. It, it's not major surgery, okay? Now, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical professional. I'm going by what different people have told me. It looks like he'll be ready to start at the beginning of the season, whether he'll be able to participate in training camp and be 100%. I'm, again, not a medical professional. However... I originally had in my mock draft, Caleb Farley in a surprise, a minor surprise, going to Philadelphia at six. If you had him at 16 and you think you're healthy and ready to go, that still makes sense. But it really doesn't make sense for Philly to take uh, Farley at six with this upcoming surgery. So I made some changes in my mock draft where I now have Patrick Sertan as the pick at six and J.C. Horn uh, will now be the pick at Dallas at 10. Originally, I had Farley at 6 or 10 at 10. And I was going to put J.C. Horn here at 16. So keep in mind, if the Arizona Cardinals believe that Farley is going to be 100% ready to go, that could very easily be the pick. Keep in mind, whoever the Cardinals have is their best available corner going into the draft. Whoever is available at 16, whoever they have not rated highest, that could easily be the pick. And that's with or without the Malcolm Butler signing. However, I did factor the Malcolm Butler uh, signing into, the, into my mock draft selection because I don't think the Cardinals are going to use the 16th pick in the 2021 NFL draft on a corner. But I will say if they do take a corner, it makes a lot of sense. Another position that makes sense is uh, edge rusher here. Now, the Cardinals last year had 48 sacks, but your leading sacker, Hassan Reddick, and his 12 and a half sacks left via free agency. Now, you do bring back Chandler Jones, and in 2019, he did have 19 sacks. And you also, of course, added J.J. Watt this offseason, but adding somebody uh, opposite Chandler Jones couldn't make a lot of sense. I was thinking a little outside the box here, and uh, Quiddy Pay would be very interesting. You could line him opposite um, uh, Chandler Jones. You could also use him inside. I think he's more of a natural 4-3 end, but at Michigan, he lined all over the place and a very creative defensive mind like, like Vance Joseph could really take advantage of his athleticism and his high motor. Uh, keep in mind, when you bring in uh, guys like Chandler Jones and J.J. Watt, no, Chandler Jones back, and then you add J.J. Watts. His defense could be really good. Adding a guy like Pay, who doesn't have to start right away but could help and contribute, could really turn this defense from being really good to really great. Another outside-the-box candidate I was leaning towards is uh, Gregory Rousseau. Uh, Gregory Rousseau, I think, is also a natural 4-3 end, but he could bulk up and play a five technique opposite Watt, and then he could also go outside. Neither one of these guys would really be day one starters, but both would provide instant pass rush 
opportunities and would also increase the overall athleticism to an already pretty good front seven. You're in a really tough division, so having a really good athletes along the front seven is just going to help. I decided, however, to go in another direction. When I look at the Arizona Cardinals and I see them losing Kenyon Drake in free agency, to me, that is a major hole. Take a look at Travis Etienne, and I'm butchering that name. I'm sorry. Here you go. You have a three down back with speed and explosiveness. Uh, you got a guy with excellent receiving ability. So in Travis Etienne, you have somebody who could actually be an upgrade over, over uh, Kenyon Drake, who you now are without. However, Kenyon Drake being a former Alabama Crimson Tide member, I thought it'd make a lot more sense to dip back into that Tuscaloosa pool of talent. So, with the 16th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Devontae Smith, wide receiver out of Alabama. Okay, why wide receiver? Well, as of today, Larry Fitzgerald hasn't decided if he's going to come back to the Arizona Cardinals for what would be his 57th season in the NFL. And uh, the guy they signed to a one-year deal, and that's A.J. Green, he looked like he was 57 last year uh, for the Cincinnati Bengals. And, and here's the thing, neither one of these guys are a real number two uh, wide receiver in this offense. And, and bottom line, this offense, the run-and-shoot offense, is built on multiple wide receivers. Uh, this pick here would take some coverage away from uh, DeAndre Hopkins. And it also allows some flexibility in DeAndre Hopkins' contract long term. Now, keep in mind, I, st I think he's in the prime of his, of his career now. He's 29 when the season starts. But in two years from now, he'll be 31. And if his play starts to dip a little bit, you already got somebody you can go ahead and replace him as the number one wide receiver ready to go. So... Another thing you have to think about is that the last Heisman Trophy, the last Heisman Trophy winner you drafted in the first round, that wasn't so bad. That worked out pretty good. So why not double dip and get another Heisman winner? Because here's the thing, he shouldn't be available at 16. He just shouldn't. So the Cardinals get excellent value with this draft pick. So just kind of wrap everything up. Here's why you should, here's why this pick makes sense. Number one, you don't have a wide receiver. Number two, opposite Hopkins. Larry Fitzgerald was second in the team last year with 54 receptions, 409 yards, and one touchdown. That that opposite Hopkins, that's honestly not good enough. And that was the reason why you signed AJ Green to a one-year contract to begin with. Now, this pick also allows contract flexibility if DeAndre Hopkins, if his play starts to drop, you can go ahead and move on. Number three, this offense is built on wide receivers. You, having a surplus of them is a good thing. And finally, there's no way no way Devontae Smith needs to be available here at 16. Most mock drafts have him gone in the top 10. However, he's fallen in my mock draft, so the Cardinals get excellent value here with the 16th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. Now, did you like this pick? Did you boo me? It's okay if you did. Either way, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think. And we'll go ahead and we'll discuss it. Now, Monday, I am going to break down the Las Vegas Raiders. Still weird to say. And if you're watching this on Friday night when I'm releasing it, you know what's going to happen. I'm going to go live here on YouTube, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Don't suck. Join the show. And I will see you tonight.